Hey guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here. Now quite a few of you on the stream and in the YouTube comments have been asking me for some tips and tricks when it comes to Realm Royale, specifically for this new patch, patch 14, involving the talent system, what to play, what to be looting, and where to be landing. Now I did a video similar to this about a month or two ago, um, but that was on the previous patch and quite a few things have changed since then, including the game coming out into open beta on Xbox and PS4. So what I thought I'd do going forward, because I do expect that to be another patch within the next week or two, that's probably gonna change things up pretty drastically again. But what I thought I'd do is for each patch, just do like an updated, all right, here's what's new in Realm and here's how to get the best out of the game currently. So let's start off with what to play. What do I think is the best class right now? And uh, what should you be going for if you do wanna pick one particular class which talents should you go for and how does the talent system work well right now i think mage and hunter are the strongest classes in the game i think hunter with the recurve and the longbow is ridiculously strong the frost longbow can hit for over a thousand per shot with the recurve so you fully charge up the bow hitting for over a thousand plus the slow is a very nasty combo and it's also really easy to draw back that bow as well i do want to point out that a lot of this video will be coming from a pc perspective so those of you who play on xbox or ps4 if you find the longbow to be not as effective just bear in mind that i am talking from a pc PC perspective. I also find Mage to be equally as strong, if not stronger, because of her Killing Frost Ice Staff talent, so the ability to guarantee the forge of the Ice Staff, especially when you get it to Legendary, the increased damage, increased radius of this thing, it effectively acts like a rocket launcher, which is a, uh, turns out to be a pretty powerful weapon in Realm Royale. Now, just because I say these two classes are good doesn't necessarily mean Warrior and Assassin are bad. I think they're pretty strong in their own rights, but I'm just talking about what I think is the top of the top right now, but I would say Warrior and Assassin are only maybe like 5% worse than these two classes, so it is pretty similar. Now, before we get into the ideal build for each class, I just wanna explain what the talent system is real quick. Some of you who are just coming back to the game and some of you who are just starting the game might not fully understand the concept of the talent system. So basically, when you start Realm Royale right now, you start off with a default build. You start off with uh, 10 available talents. These are all the starting talents. And as you level up your character, and when you can level up by just playing the game, so right now the experience breakdown is you get 200 XP for coming first, 150 XP for coming second, and 100 XP for coming third in a match. The first kill you get of the game is worth 100 XP. Every kill after that is worth 20 XP and every minute you spend alive in the game is also worth 20 XP. Now I got this info from this website here. Uh, this is put out officially by the developers. If you wanna check that out for yourself, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. But effectively, each game you play is gonna get you more XP, whether you get kills or not, you are still technically spending time alive. So as long as you can spend like, you know, five minutes alive and get one kill, you're gonna be getting a decent amount of XP. Now each character goes up to level 30, and a lot of these builds are talking about a fully maxed out character. So this is what you wanna be working towards. Starting with the Warrior, I think the ideal build that you can run with him is Entrapment, Warrior's Arsenal, and Brutality. Now with this, you wanna be running the Guaranteed Forge of the Net Shot to synergize with the Entrapment. You want the Guaranteed Leap, and you want the guaranteed forge of the throwing axe. Now the idea behind this build is that you leap on somebody for 600 damage, you root them in place with the net shot dealing 200 damage, and then you throw another couple axes at them, each one dealing 20% more damage, and they're probably gonna die pretty fast. This, uh, this melts a lot of classes really fast. The entrapment is probably one of the most unfair talents in the game, it's gotta be said. It is hard counted by the crowd control rune, so there's a rune in the game that reduces slows, reduces roots, reduces knockback. Um, so if they do have this rune, the entrapment won't actually do anything against them. But quite a lot of the time, I'd say like 70% of the time, the enemy doesn't have this. And then that generally means you win. You can't move when you're rooted. You can't use movement abilities when you're rooted. All you can do is stand there and try and fire back. But it is a really nasty talent. So this is a really great build with Warrior. It's what I've been enjoying the most. Next up for the Hunter, the build that I think you want to be working towards, the build that I've been getting the most success with is Explosive Tips, Recurve, and Exaction. And again, you want to go for the Guaranteed Forge of the Blast Arrow for the Explosive Tips. You want to go for the Guaranteed Forge of the Dodge Roll for the Exaction. And you want to go for the Guaranteed of the longbow for the recurve. Now the idea of this build is just to again kind of burst them down. You'll see a theme with a lot of these builds. Um, so you dodge roll, hit them with the longbow for the bonus damage, and then hit with the blast arrow for the bonus damage. Now the dodge roll text seems to be a little bit bugged right now. It says your next attack within the next three seconds will deal 30% bonus damage, but in playing it, it actually seems like it's all of your attacks for the next three seconds deal 30% bonus damage. So you're getting 30% bonus damage on your already 35% bonus damage on your longbow, which turns out to be really, really 
strong, and hopefully you're slowing them down if you have the Frost Longbow, and then whilst they're slowed, and whilst they've already lost half their health to that first hit, you hit them for another 900 damage with the Blast Arrow, knocking them into the air, and then you finish them off with a final shot, so this is why I think Hunter is disgustingly powerful. She can potentially kill somebody in like one and a half seconds, even faster than the Warrior with the net shot. Now next up we have the Assassin. Now I don't have the most experience with Assassin, I haven't played too much of him this patch, I don't think he's that fun to play currently, unfortunately, but what I would run if I had a maxed out Assassin is Saboteur, Assassin's Arsenal, and Assassin's Speed. And with this I would go for a guaranteed forge of a Concussion Bomb, the guaranteed forge of the Blink, and the guaranteed forge of the Sniper Rifle. Now the idea is, behind uh, Saboteur and Assassin's Arsenal, you'll notice these are both the starting perks, is you just can just use your abilities more often. I don't find Sensor Drone or Smoke Bomb to be particularly powerful, however Concussion Bomb to knock them into the air and also to just deal an extra bit of bonus damage makes it easier to line up those snipes and uh, potentially take the enemy out pretty fast. Now it's gotta be said, Sniper Rifle is one of my favorite weapons in the game. Technically you could argue that Toxicology plus the guaranteed forge of the Venom Pistol is stronger, and I might be tempted to agree with you, but I think that build is disgusting, and I don't want to recommend that to you guys, but just so you're aware, that is a thing. Uh, from what I've heard in the comments, a lot of you guys on Xbox and PS4 have been experiencing a lot of toxicology assassins, and I'm sorry about that, uh, but I don't want to promote this here. Let's, uh, let's be for the cool snipes as you hit them into the air with the concussion bomb. And the final build, and my favorite build of this uh, current patch, is the Killing Frost build with the mage. So I run Sorcerer, Killing Frost, and Mage's Speed along with the guaranteed fudge of the Ice Block, Ghost Walk, and Frost Staff. Now, Ice Block and Ghost Walk are a bit of a weird one. It may not become immediately instinctive as to why these are good, because Ice Block just puts you there on the ground, and Saw allows you to go up on top of things. So why would you run Ghost Walk? Well, the reason for this, as you're seeing from most of the other builds, is you get killed really fast right now in Realm Royale. A good player can uh, finish you off, like I say, with the Hunter um, in just a couple of shots. The same with the Warrior with the Net Shot and Assassin with the Concussion Bomb. However, you can use both Ghost Walk and Ice Block to negate all damage. When you're in Ghost Walk and when you're in Ice Block, you are invulnerable, and then combined with the Rocket Launcher Frost Staff that we've been talking about, I find this to be one of the strongest builds, if not the strongest build in Realm Royale right now. After this, all classes share the same general perks, so for me, I run Vigor, Bok Bucks, Incubation, and Master Riding. Now, we're not gonna spend too much time describing this, but I think Vigor is the best perk because, again, we're in a burst meta where you can get killed in just like two shots, so having that 300 extra HP means that you could potentially take another shot, which could mean that you win the fight rather than lose it. I think Bok Bucks is a good build to go for because it allows you to get a weapon online earlier. Everybody drops 50 shots when you kill them, but if you're able to eliminate the chicken as well, you get another 25 shots, so that's 75 shots, and then you only need to disenchant a few more things and you have enough to make that guaranteed weapon straight away. I run Incubation because I get five seconds left off the chicken timer. Now this is a little bit of a questionable one, but if you are able to get the chicken rune that reduces another 10 seconds off your timer, you're only gonna be a chicken for five seconds, which quite often does help you turn the fight around a lot. And finally, I run master riding just to reposition around the map faster. If I hit a shot on an enemy with like a longbow or a sniper rifle or something, and then they go behind cover, I can really quickly push up on the mount faster than I could if I was running leg day on foot. So that's the builds, that's the talent systems explained. That's what I think you should be working towards uh, when you finally max out those characters and get them to 30. So next up, you've got to decide where you're going to land so you can get into these games and, and practice these builds and get more XP. So where do you land in Realm Royale currently? Well, it kind of comes down to your own choice. Uh, places that I would recommend is either Autumn Fields or the Ice Graveyard. I think both of these spots have a lot of good loot, but there's not too much action, so it gives you a bit of a slower start to the game if you just want to get to grips with how everything plays out. Or if you want to go straight in at the deep end, sort of the Tilted Towers of Realm Royale, I think both Crossing and Lumberfall generally have a lot of action over there. Now where you do land at one of these spots, which weapon should you be picking? up and what should you be avoiding? Well right now I think actually most weapons in the game are great, with the exception of the submachine gun or the SMG, the assault rifle, and the Bolt Staff. I think these three weapons are pretty bad. I wouldn't recommend picking these up. Again, this does come from a PC player's perspective. Maybe the Assault Rifle and SMG are really strong on the console, but here on PC, they're generally scoffed at, and I think you should pick up most other weapons. Slug Rifle is one of the best starter weapons and one of the best weapons in the game just consistently, so always take a Slug Rifle over most other things in the game. You generally want to be looking for your class weapons, and obviously when you go to the Forge, that's what you're going to be making. Now, Sword is a bit of a weird one. I wouldn't always recommend Sword. Good players can make a good use of the Sword, but it is really hard to reposition and get up close to land the damage with it. If you're running something like Edge Master on Warrior for the bonus damage and movement speed with the sword, then obviously you want to go for, but generally I wouldn't recommend picking up a sword either. And then ability-wise, most of the abilities in the game are pretty good right now, especially if you are running them with the talent, so obviously you always want to be running Net Shot if you're running Warrior Entrapment. But some abilities that I would recommend you stay away from are Sensor Drone and Ice Wall. 
Now, Sensor Drone can be good in some situations, and you could argue Ice Wall is as well, but for the most part, I would just say stay away from these abilities, even if they are for your class. You're just better off using m most of the things in the game. I think one of the strongest abilities in the game right now is Barricade, which doesn't actually belong to any class, but uh, again, when we live in a burst meta where you can be killed in a couple shots by most classes, being able to prevent any of that damage while you can also shoot through the Barricade turns out to be really, really good. Ice Block is also good from this situation, but for a less experienced player, you're going to have a hard time getting value out of that Ice Block, so just be aware that maybe you don't want to pick up Ice Block immediately. And I think that pretty much covers the basics for uh, Patch 14. Again, there's a link to my previous guide in the description down below if you want to check it out. We go into a little bit more detail there. There's still some relevant stuff, including how to position in fights. We go a little bit more in detail on what weapons to use. Class-wise, I think the best classes for beginners to play right now are people coming back into the game, a hunter and mage, just because they are the strongest right now. Assassin and warrior, a little bit trickier, especially when you start out and you don't have any of those nice talents unlocked. They do feel pretty rough to play, but hunter and mage, generally good from the get-go. Once again, I'll be doing another updated video of this when patch 15 comes out sometime in February. If you are watching this and it's now February or beyond in 2019, link in the description down below if you want to find the latest updated guide to Realm Royale, but right now at the time of recording it's the 29th of January, and these tips and tricks and uh, general thought process is what I think makes a good Realm Royale play right now. If you guys think I missed anything out, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any tips or tricks, especially as a console player to other console players, again, let me know in the comments down below. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys all next time.